So who are the top 10 catchers in baseball right now heading into 2022? I have my picks. Let's get into it. What's going on, baseball fans? Jeremy Latacuente here for the Baseball Banter Broadcast. And as I said in the open, today we are looking at the top 10 catchers in baseball right now heading into the 2022 campaign. This is a personal list, so this is my top 10. But I want to hear from you guys. Let me know who you think are the 10 best catchers in all of baseball going into the 2022 season. And we can continue the discussion. But as we begin, we look at number 10. Now, number 10 on my list is an absolute defensive stalwart on this particular list for me, and that is that of Martin Maldonado of the Houston Astros. I think that Martin is an absolute defensive wizard behind the dish. Now, yes, he's not really going to give you much offensively, but in my opinion, the position of catcher is one of the most defensive heavy positions. Now, that being said, there's a lot more offensive catchers than we have in the game right now than defensive only catchers. But... When you look at what this list is capable of providing, a guy like Mar Maldonado is going to be able to help the Astros pitching staff as a whole continue to improve and be better. And while I think his offense is always going to be a bit of a struggle point for him, this is still going to be one of the better defensive catchers in all of Major League Baseball and thus number 10 on my list. Now as we get into number 9 on my list, it is an absolute yearly inclusion for me and it is that of Yadier Molina. Molina to me, even at the elder statesman age, is still one of the best in the game. I think that his defensive ability, while it is starting to recede a bit, his offensive ability has receded a bit. His presence and his command is something that has not. I think that in the game of Major League Baseball, it is well known and well established you do not run on Yadier Molina. This is one of the best defensive catchers that we've ever seen in the history of the game. And as well, we had a strong offensive push from him for several years. Now, now, while he's no longer that same player and likely entering his final year playing for the Cardinals and for Major League Baseball, this is still going to be one of the guys that I most value behind the plate. And if I were looking to start up my team, Yadier Molina would definitely be on my short list for who is my catcher. Now, as we look at number eight on my list, it is that of Omar Narvaez. Now, this is going to be one of these offensive-minded catchers. I think that what he has lacking in defensive ability, his offense more than makes up for. When you go into this new campaign, especially with the idea that we may be getting robotic umps, the electronic strike zone, pitch framing and things of that nature are going to be less and less important. Therefore, a catcher who can bring you some serious thud offensively is going to be a guy who you can rely upon. Therefore, to me, Omar Narvaya is one of these type of catchers. Now, as we get into number seven on my list, it is that of Mitch Garver. I think that we had a real breakout year a couple of seasons ago for Mitch Garver, and while he's been injured since and hasn't really been able to get back to that level, I think 2022, he finally puts it back on track. I think that there's an ability for this player to be able to be an offensive threat for the Minnesota Twins, and honestly, an underrated threat for Minnesota. For Garver, this is going to be a guy who's going to slide into the middle to lower half of that lineup for Minnesota, but could also come in and lead off the game. While it's an interesting move and an interesting mindset, his strike zone ability and his ability to put the bat on the ball and hit for a little bit of power also makes him a sneaky, suspicious threat in that Twins lineup. So therefore, Mitch Garver makes my list. Now, as we get into number six on my list, it is that of Sean Murphy of the Oakland A's. Now, Oakland is going to be going through a strange season in 2022, in my opinion. I think that there's a lot of potential moving parts from Oakland, but I think Sean Murphy stays behind. I think that Oakland is going to try to build around this particular catcher. I think that he has all of the makings of a star future backstop in this game and he's going to be able to kind of put that all together into 2022 and really put forth a breakout campaign. Now as we get into the top five, we begin looking at that of Wilson Contreras. The Cubs to me are going to be a very interesting team to watch as this MLB lockout closes out and we start getting some moves being made. Whether the Cubs decide to pivot and try to go after another postseason berth 
or if they decide to sell off pieces, Wilson Contreras is going to be heavily favored in both factors. I think that if the Cubs are looking to continue to build, Contreras is going to be the guy that they build around. His ability as an offensive force behind the plate, as well as being versatile enough to be able to play in the outfield as well, also offers the Cubs a serious multi-dimensional threat. And if the Cubs decide to pivot course and actually start selling pieces off, Contreras is going to be the type of player that allows the Cubs to get something serious back in return. His versatility, again, is going to be the biggest calling card to this, not to mention his offensive talent. So I think that going into the 2022 campaign, Wilson Contreras is a player to watch. Now, as we get into number four on my list, it is that of Will Smith of the Los Angeles Dodgers. I think that this young catcher is absolutely going to blow people away and have an even bigger breakout star campaign going into 2022. There's going to be an opportunity for the Dodgers to really put this player at the forefront of their lineup and be one of the biggest threats and most underrated. I think that this is going to be one of the more clutch players inside of that Los Angeles Dodgers lineup and being a consistent threat behind the plate defensively as well is also going to boost this player's reputation. And therefore he makes number four on my list. Now as we get into the top three, we begin with Yasmani Grandal. The switch hitter offensive force that is Grandal is only going to serve the White Sox even better in 2022. I think what he's capable of doing on both sides of the ball is really going to help the White Sox push forward and maintain the grasp that I think that they're going to have in 2022 on that American League Central Division. To me, Grandal is going to slide in right into the middle of that order behind guys like Abreu, Eloy Jimenez, and Luis Robert. I also think that there's an ability for this player to understand the running game as well and being able to control things on the defensive side. And to me, while being one of the best catchers in the game, he is still quite underrated, but he makes number three on my list. Now, as we get into number two, to me, Salvador Perez is going to be one of the best players in all of Major League Baseball. We would see a huge Monsters campaign from him in 2021, and I think he follows that up in 2022. The Kansas City Royals are going to be an interesting club. While I don't necessarily think that they're going to truly find themselves in a serious postseason hunt, they could very easily surprise people, and it is going to come on the bat and the ability of Salvador Perez. To me, this is one of the most underrated players in all of Major League Baseball, not just at the catching position. His ability to be able to call the game, to be able to command the strike zone at the plate and behind it, to me, is going to be one of the best abilities that we see from this position or any other. I think with Salvador Perez and his talent that we would see a blossoming breakout campaign in 2021, 2022 was going to be the follow-up like we expect to see. Now, as we get into the number one catcher in the game, I think there's very little question. It is JT Romuto. To me, Romuto is absolutely the premier complete package as a catcher. His ability to hit for average, hit for power, run, steal bases, be able to control the running game on the defensive side, have that cannon of an accurate, powerful arm behind the plate. And not just that, but being able to call games, being able to frame pitches, and being able to be the leader in the clubhouse that you'd want and expect from your general on the field. To me, Romuto encompasses all of this and much, much more. And therefore, it is very easy for me to say that he is the number one catcher in the game. But I want to hear from you guys. Let me know your feelings on this down in the comment section below. Who are the best 10 catchers in all of Major League Baseball heading into the 2022 campaign? Let me know your feelings on this down in the comment section below. Let me know where you disagree with my list. Or if you agree, let me know that as well. Because I do appreciate the comments. It helps us grow this community as we continue to get more involved with the conversation. So make sure you leave your thoughts for me down in the comment section below. And if you have any other suggestions on content that you'd like to see from us here at the Baseball Banter Broadcast, let me know that as well. As always, keep it locked into the entire GLMG family with We Sibs, The Granny Geek Show, and of course, the Baseball Banter Broadcast. For sticking around all the way to the end, I want to thank you guys and offer you a promo code on BaseballBanterBroadcast.com. Use the promo code BANTER to save 5% off your order. So thank you for tuning in. Keep it locked in all season long as I continue to bring you the latest news, notes, and my personal thoughts, theories, and opinions on the game of Major League Baseball. Peace.